You know my crackhead boyfriend, the one you're always telling me to leave. Yeah, well, I didn't take your advice, but he did, sort of. So, that's at a finish, and I'm sure you will be very happy for me. She don't make you happy. You can make her happy. And this makes you happy. Well, I can solve that. I can solve problem number two and problem number one with problem number three. See, it's all in your perspective. You may or may not be watching a play. You be the director. Make it happy. Have a good night. I'm sorry, I'm late. UPN sucked me in again. <laughs> I need hard liquor. Oh, that's service. Excuse me one moment. Oh, I needed that. So, how you been? Wait, before I ask, do you think we should get to me first? Because I have a lot. Maybe I can just run through it and then we can discuss? Yeah, okay, it goes. You know my crackhead boyfriend, the one you always telling me to leave. Yeah, well, I didn't take your advice, but he did, sort of. So, that's at a finish, and I'm sure you will be very happy for me. But wait, there's more. I'm having a crackhead's baby. <laughs> so, how you been? Are you understanding this? 
My name is Catherine, by the way. Can you tell me what I am? Can you say it with me? I am. You can do it. Come on, dog. I'm residentially challenged. Very good. Very good. Yay. I know I'm meant to be here. It's not that I can't find a job. It's that I already have one. And part of my job is to be residentially <laughs> challenged. You see, I am a seer. I see things. I see things not because I'm on crack, but because I have a special relationship with God. <laughs> yes, it's true. And I have known this all my life. And have I ever had a home? No, because it's part of the mission. <laughs> I remember the first time I ever had to eat out of a garbage can. You would think that that would be a bad experience, but no. I was 13 years old when God put my first residential and challenged me on the table, and he told me, this is a gift from me to you. And I opened up that garbage can, and I didn't eat bread of shame. No. I ate pizza. <laughs> but wait. I ate a whole pizza, but no, no. I ate a whole cold pizza with my two favorite toppings on it, pineapple and anchovies. Motherfucker, you ain't gonna tell me that it's from heaven, and I'm gonna fuck what you think. <laughs> Hello, my name is Emily Alma, and I am your motivational speaker. And yes, I'm deaf. But not to worry, that doesn't mean you can't understand me. That just means you have to listen. How lucky for you. <laughs> so <Solomon laughs> once said, in seeking wisdom, the second stage was listening. I'll tell you the first later. Your company has informed me that none of you are deaf. Therefore, it is not necessary for me to sign. Yes. So, okay. I will move that distraction for you. But please be aware that I do do this course in sign language, if need be, for the future. Welcome to the power of certainty. This course is designed to transform your life in four steps. Four easy steps. In truth, they're not so easy, but possible, for sure. Are you curious to see how you can transform your life in four steps? Yeah. Let's find out. Step number one. You have. You have always had and you will always have everything you need. Everything you need to be utterly happy, completely fulfilled, and totally satisfied. Okay? <laughs> Some of you may say, why then am I miserable? <laughs> Can't keep up with the mortgage, light, gas, water, cable, home phone, cell phone, car, gas for the car, insurance for the car, insurance for your house, insurance for your life. <laughs> Food, clothes, family, friend, and what are your children's names again? <laughs> the answer is simple. Don't let anyone ever tell you otherwise. You don't know to want what you need instead of wanting what you don't. When we get what we need, we become happy and fulfilled and it lasts. When we get what we want and we don't need it, the fulfillment goes away almost the instant after we achieve it. Life is designed for your ultimate fulfillment. Life is also designed as an escalator. Moving stairs, going down. You move, you stay put. You move fast, you go forward. You stop, you find yourself at the bottom. I don't make rules, <laughs> but one rule of life is no free trips. You will be happy 
as long as you earn what you get. I think we've earned a break. See you at 10. Believe <laughs> <laughs> <Dreamer>, right? <laughs> a new song. Want to hear it? It starts out like this. Sitting with my orange soda, wearing my maternity toga. That's all I have so far, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like being pregnant. I don't like pickles and ice cream. I haven't liked pineapples and anchovies since I'm a kid. And get this, brown rice and peanut butter. Do you know what it's like for somebody who is anorexic to see themselves eat these foods? I mean, I'm not anorexic anymore, but their mentality doesn't totally ever leave you, you know? Especially when you were the way I was. I mean, I used to be so bad, I thought food was the enemy. <laughs> <laughs> I get up from the hospital and they fucking fill me up with this fluid through my arm that's supposed to give you nourishment, but really, all it does is blow you up like a balloon. So, I would get out of the hospital and think I was more fat. On top of that, the shit would make me hungry. Because usually when you think food is the enemy, you don't have much of an appetite. But the shit would make me so hungry. And when you haven't eaten in like a week, you think, I can eat a whole pizza by myself. I remember one time I was like 13, almost 14. I was like 13 and a half and a half. And I had just gotten out of the hospital. And I snuck out of my house, down to the corn pizzeria, bought myself, bought myself a large pizza, snuck out of the corn pizzeria and into some hiding place where I would then open this box of pizza, look at this pizza, cry, probably from about how fat I was from the fucking fluid, and then I proceeded to throw this whole sweet, cheesy, <clears throat> salty pizza in the garbage. <clears throat> Unbelievable. Wanna know what saved my life? Marijuana. <laughs> I'm not kidding you! Marijuana saved my life! <laughs> Yeah. 
accidentally challenged, challenged people. I like to talk to residentially challenged people. Must feel kind of like talking to a puppy. Only there's the possibility we'll talk back. This raging feminist comes and sits next to me. Uh, she sat next to me because she was raging. And well, it's no fun to rage alone. It's much more fun to bitch to people. Only it's not polite to bitch to them. So she bought me a sandwich, keeping it ransom in her hands as she bitches about babble in the bubble about what we call God. Father! Motherfucker! <laughs> Get this straight. People like to talk to, but they don't like to talk with. So I very gently smiled and took my sandwich so that I could talk and tell her what I had to say without her taking my food and walking away. I got skills. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, when she said, what do you think? I said, I think you're feminine. Your heart's been broken. You don't want to let anyone else in because you can't commit to a man because it won't be worth the spit you'll throw in his face. Every time you think you're getting a command from the real opposite race, masculine. So, you become a whore. Spread your legs at the open of a door. God forbid you should feel more. But it'll change. Don't worry. You might be 40 by the time things rearrange. But you in no hurry. Because like I forgot to mention before, you can be a woman. And people can hear you roar without your attitude being a damn immature. <laughs> Whatever. It's not that I was even being mean. It's that the truth pisses people off. It's not the words. It's the truth. The truth is just something that people have a bad reaction to. Listen what happened to me yesterday. I saw this woman, right? And I saw... <laughs> That her sister was gonna have a baby. Her sister. And now, I usually don't see shit for no reason. So I figure I better congratulate her for her sister. You know, I wasn't even asking for no help. I came up to this bitch with nothing but I have something to tell you. And she took. And now, I know I'm smelling. <laughs> and I don't look in mirrors. But how shabby can I be for this bitch to take one look at me, scream her head off and back into the unsuspecting honed individual behind her, waiting to wash her car. I would be so pissed off if I was going to wash my car and some bitch backed into it. Right? <laughs> Man, this is too sweet when you hang out at the gas station all damn day. No. That's not right. I see shit for a reason. I'm supposed to do something. Can't do nothing in a bitch is screaming in my face. <laughs> Didn't do nothing. <laughs> Welcome back. Now, real quick, let me cop. Excuse me one moment. Fine. Ice not raw. <laughs> All your soul wants is what it needs. Therefore, all you need is what your soul wants. <laughs> In other words, all you need is what you need 
to have what you want. <laughs> when you are certain that you are no longer a victim in this world and that you will be granted anything and everything you need, as long as you reach for it, it will be placed in your hand. With certainty you find, guess what? <laughs> everything you need. <laughs> <laughs> but remember, why are you smiling? But remember, certainty takes faith. First you believe, then you see the results, and watch miracles happen. <laughs> Step number two. Excuse me, I'm sorry. I apologize. This is my thing. I can't. But I can't listen to you if I'm looking at a notebook. So please close all the notebooks for me. I'm sorry, I apologize. Thank you. <laughs> Step number two. Stop reacting at the negative emotions and do something. I just went to step number three, but I got to go back to the notebook. <laughs> step number two. Step number two. Stop thinking of your challenges as obstacles and start thinking of them as opportunities. Someone said to me once, won't it be wonderful to hear a symphony? Oh, I don't think like that. I don't know why you would tell that to a deaf person. <laughs> <laughs> So I said, wouldn't it be wonderful to have complete and utter peace and all you have to do is close your eyes? Music is not a necessity, it's an art, a gift like my silence to be used by those who can, like a painting to the blind. I don't mind. Have you ever heard the expression, I can't hear myself think? <laughs> I don't think like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you would tell that to do a deaf person. I know a lot of deaf people who might be hurt by that comment. Cool. <laughs> and understanding information that we need in order to grow. When I was 13 or 14, I tried to figure out why I was deaf. Now, I came to this conclusion. In my past life, I must have been a construction worker or something so loud that I couldn't hear myself think my whole life. And so my soul couldn't grow. Now, I don't know. But I convinced myself that next time around, my soul made sure that my mind had enough silence so that my soul would grow. In seeking wisdom, the first stage is silence. The second stage is listening. The third stage is remembrance. The fourth stage practicing. The fifth stage, teaching. Solomon Gabriel, he lived a very long time ago, not no information. Ha, 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 ha. 
Now, I know it's a stretch, but I'm asking you to trust a redhead. <laughs> as long as there are people, there will be disaster. And as long as you keep ignoring them, they will for damn sure keep ignoring you. As long as there's a planet, volcanoes will erupt. Get rid of the planet and you don't have anything to blow up in your face. You don't have a world neither. So who cares? Woman goes to a flower stand, buys some roses, comes home with the roses, and her husband says, and you will just save all the money you spent on flowers for a year. Woman stops and says, I know. You have more money in the bank, but I want to have my roses. Would I? I lost my train of thought. What was I talking about? <laughs> oh, right. You, your little dilemma. Okay. <clears throat> Haven't eaten. No, that's me. You, 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 you. <laughs> she don't make you happy. You can't make her happy. And this makes you happy. Well, I can solve that. I can solve problem number two and problem number one with problem number
Step number three, stop reacting as a negative emotion and do something positive for the situation. No matter what the situation, it is in the times that we can react negatively and we don't as we grow. Step number four. Step number four is not a phrase. It's the removal of certain blocks that hinder steps one to three. The first block to overcome, blame. Never let blame on other people or external circumstances. A man smokes for 30 years and blames the cigarette company when he gets cancer. Who was ever under the impression smoking was good? <laughs> the second block, guilt. Don't waste time brooding about what you did wrong. Change. <coughs> the third block to overcome, indifference. In the real world, it doesn't exist. Indifference is not cool. It's merely a way of hiding your emotions and stunting your growth, like cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> the fourth block, procrastination. God gave you time to evolve, not to sit around and do nothing. Remember, doing nothing will get you at the bottom. The last block, and block of all blocks, doubt. Get rid of it. <laughs> Your perspective is everything. My father is hearing. My mother is deaf. Deaf parents usually don't have deaf children, but I'm adopted, so you can see how that worked out. <laughs> What would my life be like? And who would I be today if my father's perspective back then was limited to what he could see? A sickly child that would never hear his voice or bear him grandchildren. Today, there is no one in the world that I communicate better with than my father. And one of the greatest joys for me is to watch him play with his grandson. Who, by a lot, has his mother's red hair? He's adopted, so you can see how that worked out. <laughs> <laughs> My parents picked the dead child. I picked the one with the red hair. <laughs> Quick perspective story, and then I'm going to let you go home. Some time ago, I was in a hurry, but I wanted to wash my car, so I pulled into the gas station car wash, and there's a car in the wash and a car at the keypad. Now two cars is too much for me, so I would have backed out, but everybody wants a clean car, so someone has pulled it back on me. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm in a hurry. The woman in front of me backs into me. Looks like a bad situation, no? No, guess what? She backs into me, she takes off. I get out, no damage. She already put her code in, I don't have to wait for her, and I get a free wash. <laughs> See? It's all in your perspective. You may or may not be watching a play. You be the director. Make it happy. Have a good night. <laughs> you know my fashion boyfriend. The one you're always telling me to leave. Yeah, well, I didn't take your advice, but he did. So, that's how to finish. And I'm sure you'll be very happy for me. She don't make you happy. You can make her happy. And this makes you happy. Well, I can solve that. I can solve problem number two and problem number one with problem number three. See, it's all in your perspective. You may or may not be watching a play. You be the director. Have a good night.